Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today we're gonna do some work on the Sweetheart Roadster. Uh, I've been making some big steps on this. We're still kind of doing uh, what I would call not fun work, which is basically just kind of the, th the thankless stuff that you need to do to make a car solid, but you won't really ever see it once it's together. So uh, we did the bar and that one floor panel in the last video made the car like ridiculously solid now, which makes me very, very happy considering how far apart it was when we first started the car in like our first video in the channel. If you haven't watched those, go all the way back to the beginning in the first couple of videos, you will see how rough this car was. Um, so what I'm gonna work on is uh, basically doing like the trunk from that floor pan I made, that's where the rear, where the seat will sit, basically back to the back of the car. I'm gonna start making some floor pans. I have a little bit extra time today, so I'm gonna knock out some of those floor pans to get some more things filled in um, and uh, just make those small victories on this project and keep moving forward. So let's get started. All right, so I got my patterns all made. Um, one thing to mention is I have just a one single main leaf in the back of this car, so it's actually sitting probably a little lower than it will sit when the car is done. Um, so this is kind of like the lowest it will sit. Uh, anything from here, it's gonna go up probably a couple inches. So um, that works out well for making the floor pan and all that, so I know that we will have plenty of clearance when we when the whole thing raises up an inch or two, it's gonna gain additional clearance. So I took a torque tube, Mike brought one back from the warehouse so I could bolt that up and just make sure we had clearance everywhere. And you can see that the rear sticks up above the floor just a little bit. We also have this cross member that sticks up. So what I'm gonna do to make it easier to, uh, to service this so you can get to these bolts a lot easier with the body on, I'm gonna make a like, um, like an access panel, if you will, that'll also have clearance for the top of the rear. Uh, and we'll do that after we get the floor pan made um, and I'll make that removable. Then we will also have this panel back here. It's just simple flat panel, just fills in the area. And then I will also make um, an area that goes over the cross member so that you can access all of that um, or cover all that up rather. Uh, so now that I got this all laid out, I like how it's looking. Uh, I'm gonna start with this one. I can lay this out on some 16 gauge steel, um, draw up my patterns kind of much like we did up here, just a simple step bead um, in it. And, uh, and we can roll that in, get that one laid in and make this one. And then we can start working on our access panel and our rear cross member cover. <laughs>
two, three and a half. Ready? Yep. Just hope the ad bill kicks in quick. Kate's done this before. <laughs> she was very stressed to help. You want to sub in halfway through? No. <laughs> I'll be even more stressed. <coughs> we've all been on beat roll duty, right, Steve? What's that? So we've all yeah. been on beat roll duty. Yeah. It's three and a half from touch. Yeah. This machine. Was the other panel 16 too? Yep. Got it. Sorry, it was a tough spot. It I think I fell back in already. Uh, yeah. Yep. Here. I think I had it cut. to fit this way because it had the sub rails pull in a little bit so the trim oh, so this on. is the correct way to put it because it pulls in. Oh you got a sharpie on you. I didn't know if you had a sharpie. Yep. Alright so we got the um, the beads rolled in this so we're gonna use the pipe anvil because it rolls we're basically working where the kick up is and it rolls back down. Um, so I want to put a little bit of a curvature to it. So after you've rolled the beads you can just lightly push it down and we'll have to go check it. But this is going to give it a nice radius if we just all right, we'll check it. You're flat out there, you're going to push. So uh, by doing this, this will give it a little bit of a roll instead of trying to just clamp it at the ends and hammer it down. You're only going to get a curvature here and it's not going to have anything there. So trying to get the whole panel to have that. Well, still being floppy because I was dumb and cut the center out. <laughs> you got to make a hole in the middle of it. Oh, that after I got in myself. Like a dummy. I was like, wait, I shouldn't have cut that out. We could have done that last. But I was excited. Calculated air. Ooh, look at that. Actually, fits pretty. It's a lot better. I think my side need a little bit more. Not much though. I mean, that's you could bring that down. Yeah. Catching on the boss member a little bit too. The other pipe anvil in the shop is 
That's your thigh. That's thigh. If you can't afford a pipe anvil or you don't have one. Wonky. Looks like you're catching a little bit there on the uh, rear crossbar. Yeah, yeah, I didn't trim it all. Well, push for it a little bit. <clears throat> I may trim it back just a little bit. I wanted the weight. It was easier to get everything square if I had a nice square edge. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, so I got my little strip of metal. This is for the top covering the cross member. We're gonna make that uh, section out of three pieces. So uh, I have this piece that I cut to the correct width that I need, basically just about the correct length that I need to go up and over and kind of follow the cross member. What I ended up doing was taking a scribe and just putting, might be hard to get on the camera here, but I scribed two half inch uh, from, the, from the edge, two lines, they're about half inch away. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna tip these edges up so that when we <clears throat> weld this all together, uh, basically these, this roundness that we're giving with tipping the edge is gonna give it a nice look. So when I butt weld everything together and you finish it out, it'll have this nice rounded edge that'll look really good. Um, so the way I'm gonna do this, I want a, a nice rounded edge like I mentioned. So I have this die on the bead roller with a soft lower wheel. And I'm basically going to like dig in to the wheel with the upper die. So I have a little skateboard wheel I use. Eastwood also sells um, a die that I have there. It's a little harder. Um, the durometer of it's a little harder. So I use this one. In this situation, I'm using this one. So I don't have to pull up or anything. We can basically just run it along and it will, um, it will tip the edge up. So let me grab my flashlight so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna follow the line there and it should tip that edge up just a little bit as we go. So now we're getting a little bit tipped edge there on that so I can run it through uh, an additional time and just pull up on it just a little bit to get a little more tipping action going on. Actually loosen this a little bit. to tip this edge all the way over quite yet because uh, right now I could still manipulate the metal and this edge will buck a little a little bit like we want um, when I'm getting it to shape to cross member. So this cross member kind of goes down a little bit like that. So I can kind of manipulate it by hand. And then these edges here, I'm gonna have to either shrink or stretch depending on what we need. But I can basically turn this over. And use our cross member as our kind of gauge here, shape. Oh, 
there we go. So we have our line kind of started in there that we can hammer over and we got the shape going that we want. So uh, like I said, we're gonna have to shrink and stretch in some of these areas um, to get this to kind of roll over how we want. Um, we can also just put some relief cuts in there and hammer them over and uh, achieve the same thing. But the big deal is that we got this kind of line started that will, as we roll everything over, we'll give it that look that we're going for. So, but yeah, now this fits in here and I can start filling in the gaps so I can basically make a panel that's going to match the shape of that there and when we get basically fill in this area in front and back and then we can hammer that edge over and then you know we'll have a vertical piece we can put on it's going to go all the way to basically nothing here to where it's going to blend these two pieces together at the ends there so that will give us kind of what we're looking for there so i'm going to draw up some patterns for these and uh yeah let me start cutting some more metal and Try and get this, all of this to kind of fit together. So I got the uh, piece made that goes over the cross member. I got it all tacked together. Um, Use some Clicos and zip screws, kind of hold the whole floor and everything kind of together with the weight of this thing. Normal Clicos, um, the, the uh, cross member was wanting to kind of drop. So I ended up using a few zip screws just to hold everything up where it needs to be so that it's actually up off of the cross member and not sitting down on it. Um, I think it's a good stopping point uh, with these video videos. Sometimes we're trying to do a little bit more like bite size type parts of the project so we could show a little more in depth the pieces that we do. So um, I have that piece made, everything kind of fitting together. Uh, in the next video on this section, what I'm gonna do is do the cover for over the rear, the access cover. Um, and with that, we will make that actually removable. Um, these other parts, I believe we're gonna actually spot weld into the car. So um, that's it for this one. Hopefully it was helpful uh, watching the process, how I figure this all out. My way may not be the best way, but this is just what I'm able to do with the tools and skills that I have. Thank you guys for following along, appreciate it. Catch you later.